in this part, I'm gonna be covering productivity, utility, and entertainment apps I use every single day. Like always, I'll put links to everything in the description below, so let's get to it. All of my writing outside of writing code and documentation for my day job, which we covered in the last part, is done in drafts. Drafts is a markdown text editor, but also supports a few other languages as well, including task paper. I use this to write notes throughout the day, store snippets of text, and make checklists. This is really handy because you can use slide over right on the iPad. I don't have to keep the app up all the time. I can pull it up when I need it and then quickly dismiss it. Starting with this video series, I've even started writing a shot list for all of my B-roll in drafts. I can do this by making brackets and checking things off as I go through it. I also use drafts for long form writing as well. That could be things like composing big emails, writing outlines or scripts for these videos and a lot more. I use workspaces to manage everything. Now workspaces rely on tags to basically organize certain content in certain categories. So I have a script workspace, a day job workspace, a shot list, notes, etc. Anything without a tag gets put in the inbox workspace and a couple of times a day I'll process those, whether I need to keep them or delete them or archive them or whatever. This is kind of like what I do with the inbox with things as well, which I talked about in part one of this series. I also pair shortcuts with drafts as well. I can use this to create a new note or draft, make a checklist, or even open a workspace. I use drafts a lot like how people are using Notion or Roam, but I like drafts a lot more than those because it's a native app on my favorite computer. I'm not a big fan of using web apps or even Electron apps when you could use a really good native app. Now, the next one is more than just an app, it's a service and it's Airtable. Now, I know I just said I'm not a big fan of using web views or web apps, uh, but I haven't really found a native app that can do what Airtable can do as well as what Airtable can do. So that's why I've kind of settled with Airtable. Now, Airtable is a database service. I use this for storing ideas for videos, a database of short cuts I want to back up, and a few other things as well. It's a really clean and extremely customizable way of storing information. This isn't for note taking, but for storing data. They even have a really great API you can work with. So I built an automation that will quickly add a video idea to my database. But when I decide I want to start working on one of those ideas, I have a shortcut for that. When I run this shortcut, it'll ask for the name of the project. So I can just type it in. It will then create a new toggle project using the timery shortcut actions. Then it'll create a new project and things for that video with the title. And then in that things project, it'll create all the steps I do to make a video. So this way I can kind of track where I am with different projects. Cause a lot of times I'm not just working on one video. I'm working on multiple videos, depending on what I have time for and my situation. What this allows me to do is to keep all of my projects consistent. Agenda is a note-taking app sprinkled in with some task management and calendaring, but I haven't really been using it for that. I've actually been using it as a research app. Now, I had a really hard time finding an app that I wanted to use to kind of build outlines and gather information for. And then I just kind of thought about Agenda and just gave it a shot and it was perfect for my needs. So let me explain. Agenda uses projects. So on the left column here, we can break up areas of projects a lot like things. Then within those, you have text blocks. In these text blocks, it supports markdown. So I can make titles, headers, bold things, underline things, etc. But I can also embed URLs. So that makes it really easy to reference links and stuff. But the feature that went above and beyond for me was the ability to store files and images in line. So you can drag and drop files right in those text blocks, and then you can change the way they're previewed. You can set them as items or inline images or however you want to do it. This has been the perfect tool for doing all of my iPad OS 14 research, along with a few other video projects that I'm working on. I know Agenda isn't meant to be a research app, but if you need something like this, I highly recommend checking it out. One thing I need to do is keep track of stuff I buy for my business. That way, when it comes time to do taxes, I can have write-offs. I had a database in Airtable for this, but I've since moved everything to Spinstack. Spinstack is an expense tracking application that works really well. One thing that I really like about Spinstack is it has categories and the categories are based on tax. So if I buy something like a, a bottle of water here, I can put that under the food and drink tag and then it'll automatically get added to that category 
category and those categories will get added up so I can see how much I'm spending in each category. Now I could build something for this in Airtable, but the nice thing about SpendStack is it's there and it's gonna work. I don't have to manage it. I don't have to fuss with it. It's there so I can put in the item and then just move on. One of my favorite apps to come out recently is an app called Data Jar. Data Jar is an app that I pair with shortcuts a lot to store or reference information, data, files, text, really anything. One of the shortcuts I use the most that interacts with Data Jar is my clipboard manager. So when I'm working on something and it's something that's on my clipboard, but I know I need to copy something else before I can use the item that's on my clipboard, I can pull up shortcuts, use my clipboard manager and store that item right in a data jar. Then when I need to get it, I run that shortcut again, select get item, pick the item, and it adds it right back to my clipboard. Really simple shortcut, but I use it probably as much as my time tracking shortcut every single day. There's a lot more you can do with Data Jar, and I did a whole video on that that I will put in the description. Toolbox Pro is the app that fills in a lot of gaps for shortcuts. What's cool about Toolbox Pro is it has a lot of actions that you can just use with any shortcut. So there's some actions specifically for Apple Music that I feel should be built into shortcuts, but aren't, but I don't have to fuss with it because Toolbox Pro fills in those gaps. Recently, it got updated to work with files and folders in the Files app, which is weird to me that Shortcuts doesn't have that built in. Like you can't use a shortcut to open a specific folder in Shortcuts. Strange, but okay. But with Toolbox Pro, I can do that. Toolbox Pro is a free download, so if you're looking for a specific action that Shortcuts doesn't have, I highly recommend downloading it and just going through the library and see if there's anything that works for you and jumps out at you, and then you can buy it later on. Highlights is a great tool for marking up PDFs. Now, what's cool about this is you have your PDF document and highlights, and then as you browse through it, you can highlight things, underline things, cross things out, and anything you mark up on there will show up on the right-hand side. So I don't use this for like my video projects or anything like that a lot, but I do use it for my day job. Whenever I'm researching software or hardware or whatever, I will download the PDF document for it, go through it, mark up the important bits, and it'll be there on that right hand side. So that way I don't have to go back through the PDF if I was like, okay, I know one of these pieces of software had this feature, but I can't remember which. I could just pull up the PDF documents for that and look at the, the highlighted, the marked up part instead of going through the whole PDF. It's really handy for dealing with PDFs and researching if all of your stuff is in PDF form. Mind mapping was never something that really clicked with me. I'll, I'll be honest, I, I just never really got it. But I'll let you in on a little secret. This series is over a month late. I wanted to have it out at the end of July and I just really struggled with it for some reason. I struggled through it through July and August and eventually at the end of August, I was like, you know what? I know a lot of people really like mind mapping. So let me try mapping out this project. And once I did, it clicked for me. Like this whole project just made sense. I knew I needed to break it up into multiple parts. I knew how things needed to be organized. So the app that I've been using is MindNode. Now I'm not gonna use this for every video projects, especially smaller ones, but bigger ones like this series, it's perfect for that. So if you have a big project that has multiple aspects and you just kind of visually need to get a grasp on it, I highly recommend trying mind mapping. Now, MindNode is probably the best app to do mind mapping, but there are a lot of other mind mapping apps out there. I just like MindNode because visually it's a very nice app and it has all the features that I want, including the ability to export your mind maps as text files. So I can export the whole map as an outline for a video. That way I don't have to retype everything. Okay, so we're halfway through the series and pretty much I've just talked about work up until now, but I'm not a robot, I do take breaks. And a part of that is just kind of relaxing, reading news, watching videos and things like that. And of course I use my iPad for that. A big part of, you know, relaxing for me is kind of still doing my job. I like to use RSS to keep up on news. It allows me to stay up on tech blogs, indie websites, things like that. So I can kind of see what's happening in the tech and Apple world. 
The service that I use for RSS is Feedbin. Feedbin is a great service, but it is a paid for service. But what attracted me to it was the fact that when you sign up for it, you get an email address and you can use that email address for newsletters. I have a lot of friends and people I like on the internet that do that. So instead of me putting in my email address, I just put in this one from Feedbin and now everything shows up in Feedbin. As we talked about in a previous series, I already struggle with email and I don't want extra email showing up in my inbox that I'm not gonna do anything with when I'm, you know, I'm writing and replying to emails. To me, a newsletter makes way more sense to show up in RSS. Now, the RSS client I use is NetNewsWire. I could just use Feedbin from their website, but NetNewsWire is a great RSS client that's been around for a really long time. In fact, I believe it's an open source project now um, and it's free to download. NetNewsWire has a good clean UI and it has a great share sheet so I can share things to my Read It Later service, Good Links. I, like everyone, like using my iPad to watch video, mostly YouTube, Netflix, and the other usual suspects. What's really great about watching video on the iPad as opposed to your phone or anything like that is you have a nice big screen. Plus you have that four speaker array. The four speaker array sounds really great, especially considering the size of the device. And the display is really great too. It's not 4K and it doesn't have true HDR. It just doesn't get bright enough for that, but it still looks great for, in my case, a 13 inch display or an 11 inch display it looks really good to watch video on. Now I'm not gonna give up watching movies on my TV in my living room, but when I'm traveling or whenever I can travel, it's nice to have the option to watch videos, movies, TVs, right on the iPad. A lot of times when I sit down for lunch, I'll just watch a YouTube video or a couple of YouTube videos while eating lunch. So that's it for part three. In part four, we're gonna be covering all the hardware and stuff that I use with my iPad. So be sure to subscribe. I'll put links to everything that I talked about in this video and all the other parts to this series in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.